in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even as we seek in space and we pray, uh, the blessings of God is going to come upon our life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm wishing us all a wonderful new month. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, King of all glory, we thank you, Lord. Even as we look into your word, Lord, open the eyes of our understanding. Even as we pray, O oh Lord, hear our prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God Almighty, I commit each of your children here today, Lord, in your presence. Everything that is not of your glory in our lives, O oh Lord, we come against in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, most of them are coming out from dreams, O oh Lord God Almighty that did not speak well of you, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, I decree and I declare everything that has been sent to contaminate their spirit, man, let that you be broken now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, perfect your word in our life. Every power, every yoke of the enemy, O oh Lord God Almighty, sent against our soul. Every enemy of our soul, we come against them and we say, let them be frustrated in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, we pray that you will give us victory and our victories in Christ Jesus. O oh Lord God Almighty, our security in Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, Lord God Almighty, have your way in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. Even as most of them will be going to work, oh Lord, every pressure of the enemy that is going to stand against your word in their life, let that you be broken in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, visit your children mightily. Visit your children even as they go to work in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord God Almighty, arise and fight every secret and unseen battles in their life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we silence the mouth of the enemies over their life right now and we begin to plead the precious blood of Jesus upon their souls in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, the Bible says, and it is in the psalmist, your mercies are new every morning. Oh, Lord God Almighty, which means every morning you give us a special grace. Oh, Lord, you give us a special anointing for the day. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we pray that the grace of God upon our life shall never be frustrated. We will not grieve the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Oh Lord God Almighty, have your way in our life. Oh Lord, every arrow that is making your children to struggle, Father Lord God Almighty, you will give them a less free day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, oh Lord, and fight for your children. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to go into the word of God. Um, from Matthew 18. Who is the greatest? So, uh, this is a question that uh, let us tell ourselves the truth. Everybody asks this question. <laughs> in the world, even in the church, <laughs> everybody is like, let's know who is the biggest here? Like, who is the greatest? Who is the who is the highest? Yes, something like that. At your workplace, everybody asks that question. Who is the greatest? You know, maybe it could be the manager of the company or something like that. You know, it's always a question in the children of Adam to know who is the greatest. Um, the disciples also asked this question too. We want to even know who is really the greatest. Who is the greatest? But there are things that Jesus even said, not even only in Matthew 18, but in other places of scripture. And then he said that, you know, the kingdom of God is not fashioned like the way of this world. There is a mentality they carry in heaven, which is what we are going to look at. Whomsoever wants to be the greatest must be the servant of all. That I'm the pastor does not mean that I'm the greatest. 
because <laughs> I also have this understanding that there are chairs in heaven that are being reserved for the greatest. So the greatest is not necessarily the person at the top. Praise God. The greatest is the one that has a servant spirit. The greatest is the one that thinks like a baby. He thinks like a child. He thinks like a child. Have you seen some people say, come on, don't you know who you are? Try to behave like this and behave big and behave like this. And <laughs> look at this person. Look at how this person is doing. And look at how they behave like this and let people know that you are a big man or a big woman or big this. But Jesus says, not so in the kingdom. In the kingdom is totally different. In the kingdom, there is a way we know the greatest. And that thing again that I've come to realize is this. <laughs> Those that are the greatest, that's from the kingdom perspective, they will be the closest to Jesus at the resurrection of the just. That's during the times when we will get to heaven. Those that are the greatest are those that are going to be closest to Jesus. So let's look at this place here. It says, at this same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, say, even the disciples too, they want to know, they are asking this same question, like, come on, we need to know, is it Peter that is the greatest, or is it James? Because James is to follow, is it John? Because John was very close to Jesus. You know, there were people that were very close to Jesus Christ. Not everybody, it's like that. It's like that. Not everybody were close to Jesus. Jesus had 12 disciples. At some point in time, Jesus had 120. Very soon, the 120, as Jesus began to preach some strong message, the 120 reduced to how many? 70. After he reduced to 70, then before you know it, and then he says, are you going to eat my flesh and drink my blood? And then they are like, no. <laughs> who, who is saying this kind of, making this kind of statement? And then before you know it, the 70 reduced to 12. Also, before you know it, the 12 reduced to 11. And also, before you know it, even that 11 is still reduced to three key people that were still following Jesus. And which James, John, Peter, these ones were very close to Jesus Christ himself. So, I'm just trying to let us know that there are people that are very close to the master. There are people that are far away from him. Now, this doesn't mean that they will not get to heaven, but based on their consecration with Jesus, if it were like that physically or it was like that physically, it's going to be the same thing spiritually too. There are people that are close to Jesus. So, we now we must ask ourselves one question. Who are those that are going to be the greatest? And who are those that are closest to Jesus? And because these people that are closest to Jesus, when they die, they are going to be sitting close to Jesus Christ. And, and I know everybody wants to have that kind of grace, to sit close to Jesus Christ. How am I now going to sit close to Jesus Christ, even when I get to heaven? Now, the answer is here. Saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him. And set him in the midst of them. I know they were very surprised. <laughs> and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I know there is almost none of us here that do not have children. We have not seen children before. You know, in one way or the other, we have them, we played with them. Do you know why you always want to play with children? <laughs> Do you know everybody likes to play with children? I don't mean, you know, I mean like babies, children. Not the ones that are already wise in their own understanding. Do you know why everybody wants to see a little child and one year old and six months old child and everybody wants to carry the child? Nobody says this child is ugly or this child is beautiful. Do you know why everybody are always coming? Have you realized something about these little children? Uh, little children realize something. They always get favor from people. Do you know? 
Little children always get favor from people. Why? Why is it that everybody are close to little children? When I was very little, people always come around. You know, I and my brothers, we are not even Christians, but we pray for people when we're younger. Like when we are small, around five years old, three years old, people will come to us. Oh, mama, triplet. Let your triplet pray, pray for us. And when we pray for them, they get the fruit of the womb. It's very shocking. When we pray for them, a lot of things happen. You know, because they are like, oh, these ones are triplets. Let them come and pray for us. And when we pray for them, things happen. So I used to ask myself questions, but I was not born again. I don't know Jesus. <laughs> How come? There's something about little children. Their heart is pure. You know, one of the things that diminishes our relationship with the master is impure hearts. And impure thoughts. So when your heart is not pure and when your heart is not right, it will be hard for you to serve the purpose of Christ. So, but look at little children. Because of they have a pure heart, favor always comes around them. So when a man way pleases the Lord, he makes him to be at peace with all his enemies, everybody. He's at peace with everybody because his way pleases the Lord. A little child does not begin to think of, don't you know who I am? Look at me like this. Have you ever seen maybe a little child and say, I don't know, some of us have children here now. Like when you give your some of them, little children, you give them, you might not even buy a t-shirt that is very expensive. Maybe you buy it $2. They don't complain and say, mommy, is it $2 you bought this thing for? No. They are contented. <laughs> they are happy with what they've got. You don't see them saying something like, oh, this my own is not the best. Little children. You know another thing you see in little children? There is no hypocrisy in them. There is no pretense in little children like, oh, let me pretend now. Let no, no, no. They're just, as you see them, see, God prefers. Mm -hmm. God prefers that a man is without hypocrisy, just like his son Nathaniel. Say, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, I see you under the tree. You are a man without no guy. God prefers that than somebody that is pretentious. God, pre even if the person might be doing something wrong, but the person is able to acknowledge his state. I'm telling you, God somehow he prefers that state than trying to pretend. And trying to claim what you are not. Little children. So get these qualities. Because this is what makes these little children. To be the greatest. And this is what God wants us to copy from them. I think heaven has looked at. For God to say. Be like these ones. Heaven must have looked at them. There are two people. Only two people in this world. That God says you should be like. For they are humble. Do you know, just two, Jesus and little children, just two. And this is also to show me that Jesus, Jesus had the character of little children. You know, Jesus had that kind of character. I believe sometimes they will look at Jesus and say, Jesus, what's wrong with you? Why are you behaving like a small child? Why don't you behave like a mature, strong man, like all these Children in Israel, they go out, they enjoy themselves, and all that. Are you seeing? This is what makes the favor of God to be upon these people. The favor of God comes upon a man's life when that man pleases the Lord. That is the favor of God. Little children, I'm telling you, I know <laughs> I've not gotten there, but I want to be like that. I want to be like that. Have you seen a little child? I don't know some of the babies you have, maybe six months, nine months, one year. If you spit on them, do they say, or if you if you abuse them, do they come and say, Mommy, they cannot even speak. They can't defend themselves. They can't talk. They're just looking at you. Okay, okay, okay. They might not even be, be able to talk. They might say, Mommy Florence, okay. Oh, they might not even be able to talk to you. That's the ones that can speak. You know why? Their 
their eyes of understanding. You know, when God said, Adam and Eve, they have eaten the fruit, and he says their eyes are now opened. The opening of their eyes does not mean that it's a physical eyes now open. It means that they have now begun to understand the knowledge of evil things. Do you understand that? So, one of the things I've realized, and that is why also, as we begin to grow up, and that's why there is something I've come to realize. Parenting is very, very important. Parenting is very, very important. What did I say? Parenting is very, very important. If a child does not grow up with a mentality and understanding, I'm telling you, it can affect that child for the rest of his life. Parenting is very important. I told myself there is a way I want to bring up my children. From when they are very little, I will teach them. There is a lot of things I want to inculcate in their spirit, man. I want to teach them how to tell people thank you every time. No matter the little thing that somebody does to you, I want to teach my children to always say thank you. Even though if the person is lower or smaller or bigger, I want to teach them that when they get to school, if you see somebody that does not have biscuits to eat, share your biscuits with the person. I want to teach them at the age of one year old, see, when you come to church, take an offering and give it to the Lord. I'm telling you, what I realize is that what is disturbing many Christians is that the way they grew up, the way they were being taught, the way they grew up in the kingdom has affected them. And that's why I've come to realize being a pastor does not make me the greatest. No. In the world, it means that if you are at the top, you are the greatest. No, no, no. If I'm not able to serve the people well, then I cannot be the greatest. But if I'm able to serve, if I'm able to serve, if I'm able to use my strength, if I'm able to use my energy, whether by 1 a.m., whether by 5 a.m., if I'm able to acknowledge and collect all these things, then the spirit of greatness will rest upon me. And that's why I told myself something, that there is nobody I cannot call. There is nobody because sometimes, let me just confess to you, ego sometimes will want to make me say, why am I calling this person? But thank God I've defeated that long time ago. I tell myself, no, I'm going to call. Whether you call me, I'm going to pick. You know, because there is this nature of Adam sometimes that you want to claim to be something when you are nothing. So I realize that God watches out for every little thing that we do. The children, you don't see children say something like, for example, now two children finish fighting. Those early days, when I was quite younger, very little. Ah, my twin brother, sometimes we fight like we quarrel. You know, children, children, <laughs> you know, children fight or children quarrel. No, 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 give me that biscuit. It's my own biscuit. <laughs> my mom has to buy the same clothes. If she doesn't buy the same clothes for all of us, there is a big problem. Because we'll be like, mom, that's my own. And that's my own. So if she wants to buy red shirt, she buys red. Three for everybody just like that. If she wants to buy a shoe, she buys shoe. The same thing for everybody. That's the only way they are. But you know one thing I've realized? After that problem, the next minute, people still see us playing. So one of my aunties noticed something and say, there's something about these people. <laughs> they might be crying or whirling and saying, give me this food. But the next minute, they are playing with each other. God, <laughs> what kind of spirit is that? Have you seen that in the world? That is how it operates in the kingdom. The next minute, they are talking to each other. The next minute, they are laughing with each other. That is the same way it has to be for husband and wife too. Not that, oh, husband and wife, oh, today, you know, let me tell you, there will be problems. Don't let anybody tell you in my marriage, we will not quarrel. For 20 years, 30 years, we will not quarrel. My parents are going to be celebrating 40 years in their marriage. 40 years together. Not because they've not been through problems and things. At least I've been with them, you know. But there is something I've come to realize. That there is a lot of endurance. If, if people in a family eh, can have disputes, what more people that are not of the same family? But whomsoever wants to be the greatest must serve one another. So, most times I used to tell myself, Chedoze, did you serve well? Did you serve the people in the church well? 
Did you serve them with all your heart? Did you use all your strength to serve them? It is even better I serve. And in the place of service to the people of God, I die in that process and I get to heaven. I've done my own part. But you too, you have your own part to play. If you want to be the greatest, you also have to serve. And he says that whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I'm just telling you, you know, I don't know if it has happened to you. There's sometimes you'll be like, come on, I'm not going to call this person. I called this person one time, two times, three times. The person did not pick my call. I'm not going to call this person. You know what? I will still hear a voice inside of me. Cheer those eh? Humble yourself. Forget about that. Just humble yourself and move. I say, God. <laughs> I say, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> so, which means that I'm just trying to tell you that, like, I still see that there are still some traces inside of me that needs to be cut away. I also expect you to do the same thing too. Whomsoever wants to be the greatest, whomsoever wants to be the greatest must serve. Another thing I've realized is this. People that serve, they always get the favor of God. People that serve with all their hearts. I don't mean the one that somebody is serving with eye service. No. I say people that serve. God blesses such people. That's one thing you see with all these children. Whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I'm telling you, God cannot resist the prayer of a humble man. God cannot resist the prayer of a humble woman. God cannot resist the prayer of a humble sister. You know, sometimes we are talking of marriage. Let me tell you something. If there is a sister here, you have not gotten married. Let me just give you one secret. It's not just prayer. Oh, there is a power in my father's house and in my mother's house that is killing me. And this. No, it might not be that. Many times, what I've realized, listen carefully, listen carefully. Character is another form of witchcraft. If the devil wants to affect you, he will affect your character. What do I mean? Paraventure, let me give you an example. A man wants to come and marry a young lady. Three men has come to her and say, I like you, you are beautiful. I want to marry you also. And all of a sudden, one of the men just heard the young lady shouting one place, are you mad? Get away from me. Uh, what do you want the man to do? The man will run away now. What has made the man run away? Character, 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 character. Character. Are you seeing something there? So what I've come to realize many times is that, you see, and that character is also another form of witchcraft too. It's another form of witchcraft. So what I've come to realize is that most times what the devil does is that he affects our character so that we will not be able to get the favor of God that was bestowed upon our life. Today, that arrow is defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus. That wicked arrow that do not want us to serve the master. That wicked arrow that do not want us to serve God with all our hearts. I say it is defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, special grace is released upon your life. It is released upon your life to serve Jesus until the very end. Uh, to serve the master in the name of the Lord Jesus. I say the special grace of God uh, is released upon your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible now says again, and whosoever shall receive one little child in my name. One little child in my name receiveth me. All of you are children of God. So if I receive you in the name of the Lord, I get a blessing from the Lord too. God is saying right now that who wants to be the greatest? Everybody wants to be the greatest. But to be the greatest, you have to serve one another. See, eh, let me tell you, that's why there are some of you here, I respect some, some of you very well because what you're doing is very wonderful. It's not easy. It takes a broken person to do it. There are some persons here in the morning, they take time, they call everybody, even though most times some people will not respond to the call. They call, they call, even though most times somebody might shout at them, why are you disturbing me? You know, they do it. I think one of our brothers did something like I told him. And it was like, sir, I didn't get any response. I told him, continue. That's how it is. That's what we see here. But you just have to continue. 
I acknowledge those people. You know why? It is another form of humility. It takes the grace of God. I know what I'm saying. It takes the grace of God to pick up your phone and just to be calling people. And sometimes they don't respond. Sometimes they respond. It takes the grace of God. I'm telling you, that thing you are doing is another form of humility. You might not know. But it's another form of humility. Because in, in our Adamic nature, there are some certain things that has become hard for us to do. Mostly when God has taken you to a higher level, paraventure you are a professor. Uh, no, just look at it like this. You are a professor in a university. You have five degrees to your name. You are very rich. You are very wealthy. You know, you tell yourself, how would I be calling these ones for money devotion? <laughs> Don't they know who I am? <laughs> I'm a professor now. <laughs> I'm a professor. You even need to call me prof. Are you seeing that? But you see, but God says not so. That's how they do it in the world. That's how they do it in the world. Not so. Not so. It's only in our country. You see that soldiers and people that the president will not even come there and begin to say sorry for all the death that happened there. He's like, no, I'm a general. You guys are, you know, people in Nigeria, you know, something like that. But you see, that's the way they do it in this world. But not the same way they do it in the kingdom. So, one of the things, one of the things that I have come to also realize is that God wants us to humble ourselves. There's nothing you cannot get. Let me tell you something. There are some people, and that's why I'm also praying for God to help me. Do you know that there are some people that you just want to bless them? You know why you want to bless them? Because they are, you just feel that there is this humble spirit around them. You just want to give them money. You just want to favor them. You just want to give them something. Because there is this favor that is all around them. You know, there is this humble spirit. Pride does not achieve anything in a man's life. So, God is saying, I don't know if he's saying the same thing to you, but he's saying to me, Chedozi, humble yourself and serve me with all your hearts. Humble yourself and serve me. And serve me. God is also saying to you too, humble yourself and serve me. He now says here, but whosoever, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a mind stone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Many people don't fear this scripture, but I fear this scripture. <laughs> this scripture scares me. I will explain something to you. There's something that this scripture scares me. I'm very, very careful that I do not offend the faith of another person. You know why? Because it says that if you are the reason why another so backslided? If you are the reason, all the wonderful things I wanted to do in somebody's life, and you are the reason why the person you know is no more a Christian, and you are the reason why the person left the faith, and you are the reason why the person maybe you did some certain things or you wanted to, you know, despitefully use the person or pray on the person and all that, and you are the reason. God says that it were better that a milestone were hanged all around you. What I realize is that God is not pleased when any of his children, when any of his children backslide or leave the kingdom or something like that. It does not please God. The will of God is to see that every soul in the kingdom has what you call fellowship of the spirit. That my heart is free and pure and I can fellowship with one another. That no soul, you know, that you don't begin to pray on a particular soul. It got to a time I realized that, you know, something was happening within the fellowship. Somebody goes around and writes into people and, you know, I, 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 you know, I had to find that, find, um, find out that, you know, writing to people, asking people for money. I'm praying for people for money and all that. And then the person will say, Pastor does not take care of me. Give me money. 
give me money. When I realized that, I removed the person immediately. I did not waste time. You know why? You know why? That person, in short, somebody had already sent 100,000 naira to this person for deliverance. Ah, I say for prayer, just to pray for somebody. And then you scam somebody like that. You know what made me remove the best? I said to myself, I do not want the fate of others to be hindered. I do not want the fate of others to be destroyed. God is moved when the fate of somebody in the kingdom is diminished. It touches God. God does not like it. I had to take actions immediately. Sometimes we don't realize why we do the things we do. It is because we are protecting us from a lot of things. There are a lot of wolves. So God is saying right now that let us be careful. Let us be careful that we don't do some certain things that will make this person lose the faith <coughs> and make that person lose the faith. The Lord will give us grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not everybody wants to serve Jesus Christ. Not everybody are ministers of Christ. And that's why in these last days, it's perilous times. If you want to be the greatest, you must choose to serve. <coughs> you must choose to serve. You must choose to serve. I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Look at what he says here. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. Now, let me explain something here. Some people might think that God is literally saying your hand per se. No. <laughs> if your hand, your hand can be that bad habit. Your hand can be that bad character. Your hand can be that spirit of anger. Your hand can be, nobody can talk to me, nobody can tell me this. Your hand can be that ego. Your hand can be that immorality. Your hand can be that covetousness. But what does the Bible say? If any of these things leaded you to sin, he says what? Cut it away, throw it away, pluck it away. He now says that, cast them off. It is better for thee to enter into life hot or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. There is something also I realize that is a problem. I think the way we understand going to heaven is a problem. I think many people think that going to heaven is just like, um, I do good, I go to church, okay, I pray sometimes, I'll go to heaven. It's a lie. <laughs> going to heaven is deeper than that. Going to heaven is as deep as God will be checking your thoughts. Going to heaven is as deep as God will be checking your motive. Going to heaven is as deep as God will be checking why did you do this and why did you do that. Going to heaven is as deep as God will be trying to understand your motive for everything you do. Going to heaven is as deep as God will be checking how you served. Going to heaven is as deep as God will be checking how you spoke about this and that. Or if you judge rightly or you judge wrongly. Or you killed somebody in your heart. Or you killed somebody by your words. Going to heaven is as deep as that. Going to heaven is very deep. And that is why we need to ask God in prayer. Use your spiritual scanner on me and search me. Because the physical scanner does not see some, you know, small, small things. I think that's, that, sister, that sister that wrote to me, Precious. You write to me, write to me on WhatsApp, okay? Write to me on WhatsApp and let's let's see what the Lord do, will do, okay? God bless you, God bless you. That's a precious osas. God bless you in Jesus' name. So going to heaven is as deep as that. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the things that may be standing against our blessing is that first and foremost. Our spirit man has not been regenerated. Our spirit man has not been worked on. Our spirit man has not been touched. The Lord will bless us and help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God's desire to bring us into his kingdom, my beloved. It is God's desire. 
I might not be able to read down all through because of the timing so that we can go to God in prayer. It is God's desire to help us. He said, take it that ye despise not one of these little ones. One of these little ones. The Lord God Almighty wants us to even go after the Lordship of the house of Israel. My beloved, how are you living your life? <clears throat> are you living your life to please Jesus? Are you living your life to do the will of God? Are you living your life because you love God? Do you truly love God from your heart? If there is a tremendous passion and love for God, you know, see, nobody brought me into this kingdom. Nobody would take me out of the kingdom. That's what I told myself long time ago. A lot of things happened in my growing days. But you see, I'm this kind of person that whatsoever I believe in, I stand on it till the very end. I want to let you know that your service to God, <clears throat> sorry, your service to God has eternal value and has eternal reward. You might not have all the money here on it. You might not build all the mansions here on it. You might not have all those things, but there is something I want you to know. If you have Jesus and you are living a holy life, God will give you peace. God will give you rest. Another thing we are going to pray when we are praying is, tell God to align you to the right path. See, let me tell you what I've realized in my little years in ministry. Let me tell you. Your location determines your allocation. Are you hearing me? What did I say again? Your location determines your allocation. I've come to realize you cannot get some blessings when you are in the wrong place. For example, God has told me that I should be in Nigeria, Ikorodu. Then you can imagine I'm in Germany. Just imagine what will happen to me. All the blessings that were supposed to come to me, it will just be going to Germany. Germany. Instead of coming to Ikorodu, Nigeria. Ikorodu, Nigeria. So we need to tell God to align us even to the right place. It's the same thing. You must understand your tribe. It's the same thing to a spiritual family. It's the same thing to everywhere. It's the same thing. There are some jobs that you're doing right now. It's not even the right place for you to be. If, you, if God aligns you to the right place, you realize that you won't stress yourself much. And you will make more finances by the grace of God. There are some businesses that God has not called you to do. You realize if you do the right business, the profit margins you'll be making will be so great. What I'm trying to let us know is, ask God, what is that thing you have really called me to do? Where is that place that you really want me to be? God, speak to me. You need to hear God for yourself. You don't just need only pastor to hear God for you. You, you need to hear God for yourself. Because you are his child. You are his son. You are his daughter. You need to hear God for yourself too. So that in times of trouble, the Lord will be able to speak to you. Begin to go to God in prayer right now. Oh Lord, arise. Oh Lord, every power that has shifted me from my location. Every power that has shifted me from my location. There are places you will be in. You will just be getting blessed, miracles, signs, and wonder, healing. Everything will be happening in your life. There are places you will be in. Everywhere is just a dry moment. There is a country you will be in. You will realize favor. Favor on every side. There is a place. Most of the people today that you see, either they are not married in one world or the other, it's because they are in the wrong place. So, even their spouses cannot meet up with them. Father, align me to the right direction in the name of Jesus. In this month of March, oh Lord, align me to the right direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus, align me to the right direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, align me to the right direction. Father, align me to the right direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I don't want to be in the wrong place. I don't want to be in the wrong place. I don't want to be in the wrong place. I don't want to be in the wrong place. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I don't want to be in the wrong place. Father, align me to the right direction by the power of God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. You are going to talk to the Lord. Every power limiting my effort, 
Leave me alone now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, every power limiting my effort. Uh, every power limiting my effort. Uh, leave me alone now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, leave me alone now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, wherever they are limiting you. Uh, wherever they are holding you bound. Uh, let them leave you alone. Uh, by the force of grace. Uh, by the power of the anointing of God upon my life. Uh, oh Lord I release this decree upon the life of your children. Uh, Every arrow of the enemy, oh Lord, holding your children bound, uh, leave them alone now uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, oh Lord God Almighty. Uh, every power, oh Lord God Almighty, putting a heavy load on me, let that yoke be destroyed now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, putting a heavy load on me, putting a heavy load on me, putting a heavy load on me, release me now in the name of Jesus, release me now in the name of Jesus, release me now in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. by the power of God. Uh, Release me now in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, wherever you are right now, I decree and I declare upon your life. Be fruitful, increase and multiply in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, be fruitful now. Be fruitful now. Be fruitful now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I say be fruitful, increase and multiply by the power of God. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, every stumbling block and um, Whatsoever is holding you bound, uh, let that you be broken now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, be fruitful by the power of God. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in Jesus Christ's name, we we'll pray. You are going to talk to the Lord right now. Every spiritual force of darkness, uh, waging war against my soul, every uncleanness uh, in my life, in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, begin to cleanse me uh, in this new month. Uh, everything that has been implanted in my life. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. 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 You are not praying. Uh, as they hear your voice. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Uh, Father Lord God Almighty. Have your way upon my life. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. That is a sister there right now. Having a pain in that leg. Touch that place in your leg. I decree and I declare right now. Wherever you you are that leg that is swelling up. Let that pain leave you alone now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let it leave you alone now. Let it leave you alone now. Let it leave you alone now. By the power of God, let it leave you alone now. Every power eating up your leg, using your leg to play football, using your leg to move all around in the spirit world, using your leg to travel to meetings, using your leg to fly at midnight hour, using your leg to do all kinds of concussion. Now, by the power of God, uh, by the anointing of the Spirit of God upon my life, uh, let that you be broken now in the name of Jesus. 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 That liquid that is coming out from your body now. I command it to dry up now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let it begin to dry up now. Let it begin to dry up now. By the power of God, uh, let it begin to dry up now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that particular thing that the Lord is revealing to you by dream. And by dream, you are seeing the document, uh, but the manifestation of it, uh, it is becoming a problem. What you can see, you can capture. Now, begin to capture what you see in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that particular document now, let it be released by the force of grace, uh, by the power in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I say, let it be released now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, Lord God Almighty. Let this month be the month of fruitfulness in your life. 
Let this month be the month of fruitfulness. Maybe in January and in February. And then maybe you will hold up to 5,000 euros or 10,000 dollars. And it will not achieve anything for you. Listen to me. Whether you hold a lesser denomination or not, uh, the Lord God Almighty uh, will begin to increase. Uh, we begin to multiply everything he committed to your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because the Bible says that God does not just create. Uh, God uses the seed and from the seed... Uh, he brings the tree and from the tree comes the forest don't think that God begins to create and create and create he has created one man Adam and from Adam all the fruits will proceed from it that's how God operates in the spiritual world that is called the creative power of God from one thing God brings all other things and that is why the Bible says if the second Adam be made righteous all other ones will be made righteous if everyone believes in it so what God does is a system of seed he uses uses a seed and he uses that seed he uses it to begin to multiply to begin to expand he doesn't need to begin to create god doesn't need to begin to say oh yeah let there be lights now in germany and let there be lights in europe and asia all of you have light no 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 no. he has already spoken the word he has already released the seed and from that word he has spoken it becomes eternal in the realm of the spirit now that is how our decree should be right now and that is why you know when we tell you that sow a seed or do this or something some of you will think it is carnal. It is not carnal. You are also paving a way. You are also opening a door. You are also breaking some yoke. You are also frustrating some power. Listen to me carefully. Wherever you are right now, every seed that the Lord God Almighty has sown in your life, every seed that you have sown, let it begin to germinate in the name of Jesus. Let it begin to germinate. Let it begin to germinate. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let it begin to germinate. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me tell you the simple truth. I lie not. Let me just share this with you. A particular sister, she's one of us, called me and, you know, told me of some certain things. And then she wants God to do one or two things or something like that. Then she said, before you pray, listen carefully. She said, before you pray, I will send this seed. And so she sent that seed. Do you know that why I was praying for this sister? I'm not lying to you. I'm just telling you the truth. What happens? Why I was praying for her? Something in me just saw that I knew that angels were being released. As the prayers were, I was not just praying for her, I was praying for her and her husband. I, I realized that it's like angels were being released. I now realize that there is a power in that seed that she has sent. Angels were just being released to begin to break and to begin to frustrate that yoke. See, listen to me. I decree and I declare upon your life. Every filthy covenant that you have entered into that is speaking against your life, let the Lord God Almighty use a sledgehammer and conquer it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let a sledgehammer break it. Break it into pieces now. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus. Sazuz Yaves Kalavinia Hai. Efrazos Yaves Sarasonia. Imperosa Vilia Licaso Lavinia Hai. Lazizia Lave Caso Nove Petonia. Infrazonia Uperastonia. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father Lord, that woman there that they are troubling you at your workplace. That woman there, and they are troubling you at your workplace, wherever you are right now, all the pharaohs standing against you in that place, and they are refusing your promotion, and they are refusing your promotion, let them leave you alone now in the name of Jesus. Let them leave you alone now. Let them leave you alone now. They will not refuse your promotion. They will not refuse your promotion. They will not refuse your promotion. The Bible says uh, that this thing does not just come from men. Uh, every good gift coming from the Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. They will not refuse that promotion. I decree it to be shown now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every power that is that is using me, that is using me for evil purpose, that is using me for evil purpose in the spiritual watch. Let the Lord begin to stand for me and fight for me now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the Lord begin to stand for me and fight for me. Let the Lord stand for me and fight for me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. I, I know, thank you, Lord Jesus. It is done in Jesus Christ's name. We we'll pray. I know we have places of work to go to. As you go to work today, the Lord bless you. I'm not able to call everybody's name. 
I wish I can do that, you know, also. But as you go to work, you know, this morning, as you go in your daily activities, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you, Sister Le Shaba. The Lord keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this month, the Lord empower you and bless you. The Lord bless you, Sister Goodness Umofe. The Lord bless you and empower you in this new month in the name of the Lord Jesus. Brother Jeff, um, Brother Jeff, the Lord bless you. The Lord empower you. And in this month, you shall be fruitful. And the Lord God Almighty shall expand you even financially in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord bless you, Sister Glory, and expand you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Brother Obe, the Lord bless you and expand you. Sister Jesse, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Brother Chris, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Florence, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Broken, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mama Rita, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Broken, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Christine, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mommy Derifaka, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Julie, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mommy Chidube, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Esther Atikule, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Eddie, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mommy Grace, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Katrin, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Bimbola, the Lord bless you. Keep in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Bimbola, the Lord shall fight for you. Hold your peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord shall give you grace to pass that test in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Ada, the Lord bless you and keep in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Consuelo, the Lord bless you, keep in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Anolo, the Lord bless you, keep in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Petri, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, even as you go forth in this week and in this new month, you shall eat the glorious blessings of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I know I called everybody name. If I did not call your name, please forgive me. Sister Glory also, did I call your name? The Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Me too, let me call my name too. Che Doze, the Lord bless you and keep you in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> so let me remember. <laughs> Amen. Uh, ooh, oh, Sister Rebecca, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, the Lord bless you and keep in the name of the Lord Jesus. In case if there's anybody like that, know that uh, it's not determined. Maybe I, as in I could not see everything on the screen. It's a phone I'm using. The Lord bless you and keep you. So let, to, to, let's try to be there tonight. I'll try to be there with us too by the grace of God. And uh, tomorrow, continuously, during the morning devotions, I'll try to be there with us. Those uh, for the U.S., Canada, I'll try to be there with us too. God bless you and Jesus. And my hand over to Sister Goodness. God bless you. Amen.